In this video, we're going to talk about something called diodes. So what exactly is a diode? A diode is a semiconducting device that allows current to flow in one direction. So this is the electrical symbol of a diode. Conventional current will flow in the direction of the arrow. It won't flow in this direction. The only way you can make it flow in that direction is if you apply a very high voltage because any insulator can become a conductor if the voltage applied is very, very high. There's always a breakdown voltage to an insulator. But for practical purposes, a diode conducts electricity in one direction. Now keep in mind, this is opposite to the electron flow. Conventional current describes the flow of positive charge, but electron flow flows opposite in the direction of conventional current. So the electrons are flowing in this direction. So just keep that in mind. Now the left side of this diode is known as the anode. And the right side is known as the cathode. The anode consists of p-type semiconducting material and the cathode basically consists of n-type semiconducting material. So if you apply the positive terminal of the battery to the anode and the negative terminal of the battery to the cathode, the diode will conduct if the voltage across it is greater than 0.7. For silicon diodes, the voltage drop across the diode is around 0.6 to 0.7 volts. But in this video, I'm going to use 0.7. Now, if you apply the negative terminal to the anode and the positive terminal to the cathode, then it's not going to conduct electricity unless you exceed a threshold voltage. So a diode, you can draw it this way too. It's basically, to make a diode, all you need to do is put a p-type material and connect it to an n-type material. So when a positive terminal is on a p-type and the negative terminal is on the n-type, then this diode is in forward bias mode. So that's when it conducts electricity. So current will flow from positive to negative. Conventional current will always flow in the direction from a high electric potential to a low electric potential. So in this case, from positive to negative. Now, if we reverse the polarity, then this diode will be in reverse bias mode. And so no current will flow unless we apply a very, very high voltage. Now, we can make a graph with current on the y-axis and voltage on the x-axis. IF stands for forward current. IR is the reverse current. VF is forward voltage. VR is reverse voltage. And so if you graph it, you're going to get a graph that looks something like this. At this point, the voltage is around 0.7. This is known as the knee voltage. That's the voltage you need in order for the diode to conduct in the forward direction. And here you have like the breakdown voltage which could be like negative 100 volts, depending on the physical characteristics of the diode. Some diodes, it could be negative 50. Other diodes could be negative 400 or negative 1,000. So that number could vary. But the idea is that in reverse bias mode, if you apply a large enough voltage, you can force the diode to conduct electricity. But you don't want to operate it that way in other uh, practical circumstances. Now, let's work on a math problem. So let's say we have a circuit that looks like this. We have a resistor and we have a diode. Now let's say that the voltage of the battery is 12 volts. So here's the positive terminal of the battery and here's the negative terminal of the battery. And let's say the resistor is 50 ohms. And the voltage drop across the diode is going to be Let's say it's a silicon diode, so the voltage drop is 
So the first question is, in this situation, will there be a current in the circuit? And also, if there is, what is the current that flows in a circuit? And what is the power that is consumed by the diode? So feel free to pause the video and try this problem. So we know that conventional current always flow from uh, positive to negative. So the current is flowing in this direction if there is a current, which means that this side is positive and this side is negative. So whenever you have this situation where the arrow points towards the negative potential, or basically if the current is in the same direction as the arrow, then the diode is conducting electricity. Remember, if conventional current is in the opposite direction of this arrow, then it's not going to conduct electricity. And that's a simple way to tell if the diode is on or if it's off. So if the conventional current is flowing in the same direction as the arrow, you know the diode is on, provided that the voltage across it is 0.7 or more. So let's go ahead and finish this problem. So we know that the voltage across the diode is 0.7 volts. So what is the voltage across the 50 ohm resistor? Now notice that the voltage of the battery is 12, which means that the voltage across the resistor and the diode has to add up to 12 based on uh, Kirchhoff's voltage law. So if we take 12 and subtract it by 0.7, then that tells us that the voltage across the resistor is 11.3 volts. So once you have the voltage across the resistor, and if you know the resistance of the resistor, you can calculate the current through the resistor using Ohm's law, V equals IR. So the voltage is 11.3, and the resistance is 50. So it's going to be 11.3 divided by 50, because in order to get I by itself, we have to divide both sides by 50. So 11.3 divided by 50 is 0.226 amps. And if you multiply that by 1,000, that's basically 226 milliamps. So that is the current that is flowing in the circuit. Now, how much power is being consumed by the diode? We can call this D1, and this is R1. In order to calculate the power consumed by the diode, we need to use this formula. It's voltage times current. So the voltage is 0.7 and the current that's flowing through the diode is 0.226 amps. And so it's going to be 0.7 times 0.226. So the power consumed is about 0.158 watts. Now, if you wish to calculate the power consumed by the resistor, it's simply the voltage across the resistor times the current that flows through it. So it's 11.3 times 0.226, and that's going to be about 2.554 watts. So that's the power consumed by the resistor. And the power delivered by the battery is going to be 12 volts times the current. So 12 times 0.226, that's 2.712 watts. Now, notice that the power delivered by the battery is equal to the power consumed by the elements in a circuit. If we add up 2.554 and the other number, 0.158, that's going to give us 2.712. And so the energy that is transferred from the battery has to equal the energy that is being consumed by all the elements in the circuit, the resistors, the diodes, and things like that. And power represents the rate at which energy is transferred. So the, the rate at which power is leaving the battery has to be equal to the rate at which the circuit is consuming that power. So consider these three situations. And for each of these situations, determine if the diode is on or off, if the circuit conducts electricity, or if it does not conduct electricity. So let's say this is positive 6 volts, and here is another situation.
and let's say this is positive 8 volts. And let's say the last one is negative 7 volts. So let's start with the picture on the left side. Is the diode off or is it on? Well, we know that whenever you see a ground symbol like this, the potential is 0 volts. So current will flow from a high potential to a low potential. So current will flow in this direction. So notice that the conventional current is flowing in the direction of the arrow symbol in the diode. So therefore, this diode is on. Let me use a different color to indicate that. Now for the next one, current will still flow from a high potential to a low potential. So it's still going in this direction. But notice that it's opposite to the arrow symbol. So therefore, this circuit will be off. So no appreciable current is flowing in that circuit. Now for the last example, the ground is at 0. And this point is at negative 7. Negative 7 is lower than 0. So this is at low potential. And the 0 volt is at a higher potential. So current will flow from a high potential to a low potential. And so this is in the direction of the arrow. So in this case, the circuit will be on. And so that's a quick and simple way to determine if the diode is conducting or if it's not conducting.